What's going on guys and welcome to the channel. On this episode, we are going to be hitting up part two of a front subframe assembly for electric truck build. Now, last episode, we got the front situated. We got the suspension all set. This is all C5, C6 Corvette stuff. Our lower K member is from a Corvette. Our control arms are from Part Shop Max, which is gonna give us some spicy steering angle when we're playing with this thing. But for right now, we were trying to get our motor situated in the front of our subframe. Once we do that, we're gonna be able to shift focus over to our chassis table. We'll be able to get this assembly in place where the wheelbase would be, and then finish out with the uh, rear assembly. The motor is able to sit as low as it could possibly go in the cradle, but without the steering rack, we have no idea where the engine's gonna sit top to bottom. So what we're gonna do now is we got ourselves a refurbished steering rack from a C5 Corvette. For now, this is gonna be able to get us to where we can get this thing in the truck, we can steer it, we can do things with it to be able to dictate where this electric motor is gonna sit. I've already positioned the steering rack in here with the motor in place and found that these mounts are too high. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut these off right at the base and I'm gonna lower it exactly the width of this hole to be able to get the rack completely flat against this K-member. I might have to notch out right here a little bit, but once I get this thing where I want it, as low as it possibly can go, and actually in line with the spindles, we should be okay to be able to start positioning the motor. So let's get that rack in first, and then we'll shift focus. So we have our steering rack roughed in, everything's bolted up. You always wanna make sure that it's all in line. So what you wanna do is get all your components so you can bolt everything together so you know exactly where everything's going. We had to pitch it back just a hair. Originally, the rack would sit square with the bottom of the K-member, which then would take this input from where you would steer from your steering wheel and would like lay it down. That's like a Corvette, this is a truck. So we ended up cutting the original tabs off here, hogging it out, made a huge mess, and we pivoted the steering rack back so that now we can put our universal joint and jog up and over the electric motor. Now that this is in, finally, we are able to get our height for the transfer case on the Tesla motor. Now Teslas actually have a transfer case from the electric motor. It doesn't bolt straight up to your front wheels. This transfer case right here is like similar to a truck. So like if you had like a four wheel drive or something like that, and you hit a button on the dashboard and you wanted to go four wheel drive, you'd have a transfer case coming to the back of your transmission, which would then send a drive shaft to the front wheels, and then it would block off the backside, and then your drive shaft on that end would go to the rear wheels if this was going this way. And if you ever messed around with a front wheel drive car, that has a transfer case almost as well. We're gonna have something similar to that with this, but it's going to be a long guy on the driver's side and a shorty on the passenger side. Let's go ahead and get the motor situated and we can start welding up our tabs that we cut on our arc light plasma table. The motor is finally in. We have it nice and level. Now this is a really crucial point when you have your engine or your motor set, you wanna get it as low as you can inside of the chassis, especially when you have your strut towers in play. So this thing is nice and low. The center of gravity is gonna be super low to the ground, which makes this thing it's gonna be able to corner like a banshee. We're gonna be putting KW suspension on this truck. We partnered up with them for this build. So we're really pumped to get some variants on here. But for right now, we're gonna get the motor mount set that we cut on our plasma table. This is just gonna be a simple one, two, and then one in the back. That basically is just gonna hold the weight of the motor. All the weight is on the side right here. We're gonna end up machining this out and making some adapters so that we can put our inverters on top of the motor. But for right now, let's get this thing set and we can finally get this assembly off the bench and get it over to our chassis table. Now a chassis table is what you need if you were to build a chassis. Sometimes there's an application where you're gonna have to do some really cool chassis work, you're gonna have to do some stuff from scratch, and you're gonna need something really beefy in a chassis table in order to get that done. And Mike, I see you already finished your table. What the heck, man? Dang it, Bobby. We're well, supposed to film. I didn't finish it, Tim, but I did get a little ahead of myself. So to get us to this point, what, what have you done? What is this? This thing is huge. 
Yeah, well, we ordered some beefy two by two square steel with quarter inch wall. We basically got an overall dimension of the truck we're building, 17 foot by eight foot wide. We did that so we could roll it into our lifts and be able to take the truck off when it's done or, or put the battery pack onto the table just to make it easy on us. We got some heavy duty casters which hold about a thousand pounds per wheel. Nice. Which we got eight on here, so you know it's sufficient as far as the weight goes. So this just makes it really easy for us to maneuver around our shop, bring it in and out of the shop, whatever we have to do. Chassis table is done. Mikey is showing us the strength and rigidity of this bad boy, but as you can see, it's all set. Mike put a nice fresh coat of black on there. We have some panels. These are our pads, which will indicate where the tire, the front and rear tires will sit. These are movable, so we can adjust them accordingly to the vehicle we're building. So we had to build a chassis table for this specific setup because we have to know where the motors go. There's nothing really out there as far as buying a chassis from any specific company for an electric conversion. So a chassis table like this is perfect. This isn't aerospace, like I said before, where it's a solid Blanchard ground piece of steel. This is two by two quarter wall. So you're able to basically set it up, make it wherever you want. We can add bars. We'll be able to add other things to it. Like Mike said, these things slide. So we'll be able to move stuff around. The front sub assembly has finally made it to the chassis table. And as you can see, it is glorious. This is going to be the beginning of our truck, of the complete chassis. This is motor number one, and we still have a battery pack and a bunch of other stuff to go. But we have this thing all set in. What we did is we welded some scabs off the front here, off of our center point for our wheels, and used the same pegs that we had on our welding table to build the actual upper suspension points to now fix this thing in place. So now this is sturdy. This is exactly where we want it. It's square, it's nice and centered on the table. We have our center line there. So now what we're gonna be able to do is build the rest of the chassis off of this front sub assembly. Like I said before, the rear sub assembly is gonna be straight out of a Tesla. We got all our Tesla parts in just a couple minutes ago. This is everything we need for the rear end of the car. It's got our Tesla Model S large drive unit complete. Got our brakes, all of our control arms, spindles, even some axles. So we have everything we need in order to get started. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the IRS system in the back side of the chassis table to be able to get our wheelbase set up to be able to put our battery in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the electric motor out. It's only three motor mounts. Pull that thing out of there. And then the subframe is super light and it's gonna be a lot easier to deal with because I have to block it up and get it all shimmed up and get everything good to go. So once I get this thing out of the way, then I'll be able to position the subframe and then the motor can go in whenever. That thing was heavy, real heavy. And my plan actually worked out because this subframe is significantly light. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to position this in the chassis table without having to deal with all this added weight. So I'm just gonna throw this off to the side for now and get the rear subframe situated with all the control arms where I need it so I can start checking my wheelbase, make sure everything's nice and square. The rear end's all set on the Tesla subframe. We actually strung the front and rear hubs. This is like an old school way of getting your chassis square. If you have lasers, freaking laser beams, and you have any sort of other measuring devices, I implore you to use those. But I decided to use string. And what the string does is it allows you to measure a little bit back from the hub to the edge of the chassis table. That allows you to get a nice square track width on the front and rear subframes because they're just floating in space right now. So if we got this rear subframe off from the front, the truck's gonna be like going sideways down the road. If you've seen like a solid axle rear vehicle that kind of got out of, out of camber, you'll see it track sideways. We want it nice and square. So right now we're 117 inches on both sides to the center of each hub, which is the wheelbase of our C10. And we're also completely at 11 and a quarter in the rear 
and 11 in the front. So the track width in the rear is just a hair wider, which is actually like on what it is from the front end, which is the Corvette. And I'm pretty amazed that the Corvette C5 front end is exactly the same width as the Tesla. It just was like a freak thing that just worked out. Right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut up our inch material right here. We're gonna make our standoffs for these four points. We're gonna weld this thing in place and this is gonna be solid. We'll get our strings out of the way, get our two by fours out of the way, and then start building our subframe over this rear IRS system. We're gonna probably put the motor in first so we get our clearance and know exactly where everything goes. And then once that's all set, we can move to getting the battery situated. Well, let's do one thing at a time. So let's get these things put in and get this subframe set in place so we don't have to worry about it shifting. We have the rear drive motor in place. The subframe is welded to the chassis table. Everything is fixed. We don't have to worry about this thing shifting or moving. I was originally gonna start building my subframe around this IRS system to tie into the chassis. But I think I wanna position the battery first and start from the front back. And the reason for that is I already have the chassis started on the front IFS system with the Corvette suspension. It's already jogging down. So I have to make some support braces in the center here on our chassis table to hold the battery. I'm gonna then gap it up as high as the rear subframe and the front subframe, which is two inches. I have it as at max low right now, just cause I wanted to see what the truck would look like pounded on the ground. And then from there, we can go up. I'm gonna build my bracing right now, put the battery in place, position it and center it. And then I'm gonna start building the chassis from the front, build a box around the battery pack, get it bolted in, and then I'll jog back here and over the rear IRS system. So let's get the braces in right now. All right, this is where we gotta get creative. Me and Mikey got the battery inside the shop, but now we have to figure out how to get this thing on top of that thing. This is a 85 kilowatt dual motor pack out of a Model 3. Long range. Long range, yep. The reason why I went with Model 3 is Chris from Zero EV explained to us that it's a smaller pack than a Model S. It's got the latest technology in it, so this is gonna give us a lot more bang for our buck. And it's also a smaller car. The C10 isn't exactly tiny, but this is gonna be a better better package. The concept is we're gonna take our cherry picker, put some straps around this bad boy, and try to just haul it over here and put it down on these, on these two by fours that we have taped in place. It's gonna be a little tricky because the front end of the battery pack actually has to kind of slide underneath these two frame rails here. So it's gonna go like right in there and go right up against the back of this motor mount. So it's just barely gonna slide in there. Whole bottom of the truck's gonna be all battery. So enough talking, let's get to swinging and run that time lapse. The rear end is all in. We have the motor installed and we even have our battery situated. I wasn't gonna put the battery in this episode. I just have so much I have to do with the back end of the truck still with the IRS system. But I got super excited and me and Mikey went and just hucked this thing right onto the chassis. It's nice and centered right now. We have it up on two by fours so it's blocked up. I spaced out the rear IRS and the IFS system with the same two by fours. So now my ride height is completely maxed out. Like this thing is as low as it possibly will go. It's like right on the ground. I had to notch the frame rails right up here in order to get this battery pack up. What I'm gonna probably do in the next episode is I'm gonna continue on with the frame system. Like I said before, we're gonna start with the front and work our way back, capturing all of these bolt holes so we have a lot of work to do. But the back end's looking really nice. The suspension's in. Put in the half shafts, the axles, the drivetrain, everything like that. We still have to put an LSD in there. But I'm really liking the way this is all lined up. Thanks for watching, guys. On the next episode, we're going to continue on with the battery pack, getting it all mounted up and getting the chassis done. And then maybe we can get the cab on. It'll actually look like a truck. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you guys next time.